What is up guys? Welcome back to week eight of the Alliance. So we are getting ever so close to that playoff push. However, I've got some breaking news that we need to discuss. But first, let me set the mood. So I can see the writing on the wall, especially with this week's news of the Alliance of American Football League is dying. Tom Dundon came out and said that they are not able to get NFL players. The NFL Players Association, I guess, is blocking them from being able to pick up those players off of the practice squad that already have a contract. So real quick, let me touch base on that. I don't understand how that would affect this league in any way whatsoever. Um, they, When they first started out, they're putting out a great product. Um, fans just want to see great football. It doesn't matter if you have top tier talent or not. If it's great football, fans are going to come out. They're going to enjoy the sport. Um, I think that their involvement with the NFL has done more harm than it has good. And what I mean by that, I feel like a lot of fans um, that have kind of turned their back on the NFL with the direction that the NFL has went, um, I think that they kind of this was a light, this league was a light for them. So they, they came out to cling to a league because they still love football and at its roots, they just want to see good, clean, hard-nosed football. And that's what we got the first couple of weeks in this league. You know, hits were really hard. Referees were minimal in the games. They weren't dictating outcomes of games. Um, and I feel like as it's gone along, the more involvement with the NFL, you can just see, um, Yes, I know it's good for business as far as the money side of it, the, the backing, having the NFL support, but the NFL is a business just like everything else. And at the end of the day, they're going to be looking out for themselves more than they're going to be looking out for their partner. Um, and I feel like that's kind of what's happened here. My thing is the Alliance could stand on its own whether it gets those NFL players or not. There are plenty of guys who are not in the NFL on the outside trying to get back in. And really, I thought that this was what this league started out to be. I thought it was going to be a developmental league to help those guys break their way back into professional football. Um, like I said, I've been impressed with the talent that's been on the field. Um, I think there's a lot of guys who have made, made names for themselves and will get back into an NFL roster at some point. Um, but this is not a good look for the Alliance. Um, there's been a lot of things I think that they have they've made decisions based on NFL owners, what the NFL thinks, rather than standing on their own two feet. Um, and it kind of sucks, I'm just gonna be honest. I I originally was drawn to this league because it was a fresh start for me with football. Um, I feel that the NFL, the referees, they have too much control in the game now, and it's blatantly obvious that they are, they're able to dictate outcomes of, of football games. And I'm not gonna go into detail, you guys know, if you watch the NFL, you guys know that there have been super questionable calls, or no calls, I should say, that have dictated the game. And it just hurts the integrity of, of the game. Um, and I felt like the Alliance, when it first started, you know, it was fresh, new. The officials were, they were doing just enough to call the game, but they weren't doing so much that they were dictating the game. You know, just this past week, um, I don't even remember which game it was. I think it was the Commander's game, but it was just flag after flag after flag. There was three, four plays in a row where it was a flag, you know? And after a while, it's just, wh where do you draw the line? You know, I know that we're having the, the replays. The NFL just announced that your coaches will be able to challenge pass interference or, or no, no pass interference. But to me, how can you challenge a judgment call? Um, but nonetheless, let's, let's dig into um, Tom Dundon and kind of what he said. So. Their big issue is they're saying that the NFL Players Association is not cooperating. And I guess when they originally signed on or started this thing out, there was going to be NFL players who were on practice squads um, that would be able to come and play in this league. Now, I have no problem with that, and I, I read where they still can do that. The issue comes whenever the player that's on the practice squad, if he's under contract or, or has a contract with that team, he can't come back and go play in, in the Alliance. To me, that makes perfect sense. So I'm not sure where, I'm not sure where Tom or Charlie or, or any of the Alliance thought that they would be able to nab 
practice squad players who were under contract with the NFL. On top of that, as a player, why would I want to go play in the Alliance if I'm under contract with a professional NFL team? Even if I'm just on the practice squad, I'm still part of their their roster. I have that obligation. But nonetheless, I understand the players association side of it. You know, there's there's things in place with these with these bargaining agreements as far as injury and the amount of amount of um, hits and playing time that, that they have as part of their contractual agreement. So I get that. Um, I don't think that having NFL players in the alliance is going to make much of a much of a difference. Um, I think as long as the quality of your your product is good, it, it doesn't matter who you have in the league. Um, and I'm just going to use Arena League for example. Yes, I know it doesn't have the following and the exposure the way that the NFL does, but Arena League's been around for a very long time. There's guys who have made a successful career out of being an Arena League player, and you know they don't have to have this top tier talent to still put out a product that that people will will watch. Let's transition over to the attendance side of it. So I'm going to throw this up on the screen for you guys. Um, this is the attendance numbers up to this point. So for the first seven weeks of this league, um, you can see everyone's total attendance numbers, their average, what their lowest attendance was, their highest attendance, um, and then kind of what their median range attendance is. If you look, there are some numbers that jump off the screen to me. Of course, you guys know San Antonio Commanders, they're following, they're crushing it. Um, they're averaging right under, excuse me, right above 29,000. So they're 29,126. Um, of course, last week they broke the 30,000 mark, first team in the Alliance to do so. And every week, you know, they're every home game that they have, their their fans are showing up in droves. The alarming stat is there's a big fall off from there. So you jump down to Orlando and San, San Diego, the next two closest teams, you're looking at about a 10,000 fan attendance drop. And then let's dig into Salt Lake and Arizona. You know, Salt Lake, okay, I kind of understand they haven't been very good this year, so those attendance numbers are, are way, way low. But you look at Arizona, Arizona's fighting for a playoff spot right now, and they're averaging right under 10,000 fans per game. Their highest was 11,751. So this is alarming for me. Um, that will have to change in my opinion for this league to continue. You're not gonna be able to have two or three teams at the top who just carry this thing. Everyone's gonna have to carry their weight. I don't know if that's gonna be through relocation. So moving that team to a different market or what, but for me, looking at this, one of two things is gonna to have to happen. They're either gonna to have to move the franchises and help bolster the bottom, um, or I know a lot of you have talked about expansion, but I don't know how you could add more teams to something when you have teams that aren't aren't getting it done as far as the attendance number. But nonetheless, videos probably already ran too long, but real quickly, I at least wanna get you guys my picks for week eight because the show must go on, enough with the drab. So first up, we have the Orlando Apollos at six and one, taking on the Memphis Express at two and five. This game will be on TNT at 1 p.m. Central. Guys, with this one, um, Orlando, you know, last week they locked up a playoff spot. They haven't clinched the number one seed yet, but they are definitely guaranteed a playoff spot. Memphis kept their hopes alive with that first, the first ever overtime game that we had in the Alliance, the overtime thriller over Birmingham. Um, so. I look to see a little bit of the same from the first game that we saw against the Apollos and the Express. If you remember, game was a lot closer than most people predicted. Um, and in this one, I'm actually gonna take the Express 24 to 21. I believe them fighting for their lives, it's a home game for them. Manziel definitely gave those guys a shot in the arm last week. I feel that he's going to do the same. He'll only continue to get better the more practice and reps that he gets in that offense. I've got Memphis 24 to 21. They keep their playoff hopes alive. All right, on to the next game. We have the San Diego Fleet at three and four and the Salt Lake Stallions at two and five. This game's going to be on NFL Network at 7 p.m. Central. So, for this one, guys, San Diego coming off of a tough loss last week. Um, they are definitely duking it out for a playoff spot. Um, however, I feel that Salt Lake, they they eventually have to win one. They've come too close too many weeks. I feel like now more than ever, they're going to pull out the win. It's a home game for them. I know that we just talked about their attendance numbers, so it's not much of a home field advantage. But I've got Salt Lake winning this one 20-14. 
All right, on to Sunday's matchups. We have the Atlanta Legends at two and five and the Birmingham Iron at four and three. Um, Birmingham's coming off of a tough loss. Atlanta's coming off of a, uh, a dominant loss, I guess, if there is such a thing, <laughs> against Orlando. Uh, this game will be on CBS Sports Network at 3 p.m. Central. Uh, Birmingham can get into the playoffs with a win and a Memphis loss. Um, of course, I already said Memphis, I feel like they're going to win their game. But I also feel like Birmingham is going to win theirs. They're, they're coming back home after being on the road. Um, they're going to get the win 24-10. to 10. This will more than likely mathematically eliminate the legends they will be playing for next year. All right, to round out week eight, we have my game of the week, the Arizona Hot Shots at four and three against the San Antonio Commanders at five and two. This one's going to be on NFL Network, 7 p.m. Central. If you recall, the first matchup against these two teams, it was a tale of two halves. Commanders smoked the Hot Shots in the first two quarters, and then Arizona made it interesting in the end. But Commanders finished it with a win. Um, I predict to see a little bit of the same, maybe not so much of a blowout to begin the game, but I've still got the San Antonio Commanders pulling this one out, 30 to 19. Home, home field advantage is huge for San Antonio. Um, hands down, when you go to San Antonio, it's a complete different atmosphere than any of these other teams. They have a distinct home field advantage. I think that plays into this one. I've got them winning 30 to 19. Guys, do me a favor, if you're not already, hit that subscribe button for me, turn the bell notification on, that way you know when my next video comes out, as well as if you like this content, do me a favor, hit that like button. Um, I don't know, like I said, where this league's headed, but nonetheless, I will continue to keep pumping out content. As long as we have Alliance content, I'm gonna keep doing that. But like I said, I also do fishing, I also do motivational type stuff. Uh, I'm sure once the XFL starts up, I will probably crank out some content for you guys on that as well. Jump down in that comment section though. I wanna know, what are your thoughts on this league? Will it survive? Um, will we even make it to see a championship game? Uh, the way that they're talking, we're gonna have a decision here in the next couple of days that will decide the future of this league. I hope that it stays because the more football we have, I just feel like that's more, more excitement for the fans. But nonetheless, this video has probably ran entirely too long. That's all I got for this one, guys. I'm out.